Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, September 10th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Las Vegas, Nevada. Let's start today with the latest CVSS 10 vulnerability from Progress Software. In the past, we had issues with their MoveIt software. This time, it's not MoveIt, but it's Loadmaster, a load balancer that is created by Progress Software. An unauthenticated attacker is able to execute arbitrary commands via an OS command injection vulnerability. The update was released on September 3rd, and while there is currently no public exploit, you should definitely quickly apply this patch given the severity of the vulnerability. In addition, you should probably restrict access to the Loadmaster management interface to authorized IP addresses. But Loadmaster is not the only load balancing software requiring a patch today. Popular open source proxy HA proxy has also released a patch, but the vulnerability is less severe in this case with a CVSS score of only 7.5. A number of HA proxy products are affected. The vulnerability can be used to launch a denial of service attack by triggering an infinite loop in the HTTP2 multiplexer. It does appear that this vulnerability has at least been exploited in one particular case. And Arctic Wolf wrote in a blog post that they're observing exploitation of a recent sonic wall SSL VPN vulnerability by ransomware actors, the remote code execution vulnerability CVE 2024-4766 was disclosed and patched on August 22nd, so just about two or three weeks ago. Certainly update as soon as possible. If you find systems that haven't been updated yet, then also just make sure that you're changing credentials on those systems and definitely monitor for compromise of these systems. Just like with the Loadmaster issue, make sure that access to the administrative interface is restricted to selected IP addresses. And Elastic released a critical update for the dashboard software Kibana a couple days ago. The vulnerability is a deserialization vulnerability that can be exploited by having Kibana parse a crafted YAML document. Elastic assigned the vulnerability a CVSS score of 9.9. .9. However, there are some dependency here to be actually exploitable. The attacker must have access to an account with a number of specific Elastic and Kibana privileges in order to actually be able to exploit the vulnerability. Palo Alto's Unit 42 notes in a blog post that they are seeing attacks taking advantage of Visual Studio Code. They're attributing these attacks to a Chinese APT actor, and it's essentially sort of a variation of the living of the land attacks. While Visual Studio Code is not installed by default, it's often installed on systems later, and it also exists on various operating systems, not just on Windows. In particular, they are taking advantage of the Visual Code reverse shell feature to gain persistent interactive remote access to compromised systems. As often with these living off the land attacks, it's difficult to detect attack given that you're dealing with a legitimate feature in legitimate software. That's it for today. I always appreciate feedback. I always appreciate you recommending this podcast to others. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.